What's up everyone? April Dunham here. It's Template Tuesday and I'm continuing my series on the Project Oakdale templates. Last week I covered the inspection template and this week I'll be covering the issue reporting template. I'll walk through how to install the template and how it works coming up. So first step to start using the inspection template, you're going to open Microsoft Teams. Click on the Power Apps tab. And if you haven't already installed the Power Apps app for Teams, you'll click on these three dots in the left rail and do a search for Power Apps. Click that and that will add the Power Apps application into Teams so that you can start using these templates. If you scroll down a bit on this home page, you'll see the three templates that are available to you right now. I've already covered the inspection, but for this one, let's take a look at this issue reporting template. So this is really geared to your frontline workers to allow them to report any issues that they see on the ground. So to start using this template, you'll click on the template and select add to a team. Do a search for the channel that you want to add that to. And we'll just add this one into the general channel of the IT team and select set up a tab. And I'm going to unselect the post to this channel about the tab option, just because I don't need to post a message to everyone and then click Save. And this will go through the setup process for the application. So it could take a few minutes for this. So just sit back and relax. Once it's done installing, it's going to prompt you to authenticate into the connectors that this particular template uses, which in this case is Planner, Microsoft Teams, and Office 365 users. So just click Allow on this screen. This is going to finish setting up the application and open it up. And similar to the inspection template that I showed last week, if you caught that video, this is going to give you two different Power Apps applications in this one solution. So the first one we're looking at here is the Manage Issues Canvas application, which is intended for admins to manage the application and the issues that come in. So we'll go through this setup process and look at this app first. So from here, we're going to click Continue, since this uses Planner, and we're going to integrate this with a Planner tab. So it's going to ask us on the screen which planner instance that you want to use for this. So I'll just reuse this IT inspections planner plan that we have. But once you select that, select let's go. And this is the management application. And you'll see here we have an insights tab similar to what we saw on that inspection application where we can see the issues by status, related issues, overdue issues, so on and so forth. The view task button that we're seeing here is actually going to take us out into planner so that we can see the planner plan that's associated with this and manage the tasks directly within planner. The settings for this particular template are pretty short and sweet. So if we click on this gear to go to its settings, we'll see we just have one setting to configure, which is which planner plan do you want this to write out the task to. But the rest of the configuration here for this side of the app is in the issue templates tab. So this is where you're going to go to put in the different options you're going to allow people to submit issues for. So these are broken out into categories. So you see we have defaulted four different categories right now for car, mobile phone, printer, and workplace. And if you click on a category, they each have their own different types of issue templates. So taking the mobile phone as an example, we have three different templates in here for whether the phone is unresponsive, the screen is cracked, or the phone is being slow. So as the user is going and filling out an issue, these are options that we're giving them to fill in of some common issues that they might be having. And when we click on one of these and click the edit button next to one of these issue templates for a given category, you'll see that we have different questions related to the type of issue that they're reporting. So this lets us really customize the experience. So for this type of issue, like if your phone is unresponsive, you're able to assign how many days that this would be due within so an unresponsive phone versus a particular app not loading might have different SLAs for how fast you need to respond to that. So that's what this allows us to configure is when the task should be due. We can also configure these issue templates so that it auto assigns a particular issue type to a user. So that's what this auto assign issues to option is for. If we click on that, it opens up this box where we can search for a user. So I can search for myself, for example. And now if I select me from that list, that means anytime someone goes into our issue reporting template and says that their phone is unresponsive, it will auto assign that task to me. And with this, you can auto assign it to multiple people. So I just click in this text box again, I can search for another person and I can auto assign it, for example, to David as well. So it'll go to both of us. 
So now the other thing to this is the issue questions. So someone saying that their phone is unresponsive, now you can ask some leading questions to get more information from the user about this particular issue. So what we have in here filled out is, when did the phone become unresponsive? So we're gonna ask them that. We're gonna ask them what's being performed on the phone, had this happened before, and what the make and model of their phone is. So from here, we can move and rearrange these with the up and down arrows, the order in which they show. We can remove one of these with the trash can if we need to, and we can add additional questions by clicking Add Question. So maybe we wanna ask, how old is your phone? And then lastly, we can designate a primary contact and supporting information. So we can communicate to the user that for an unresponsive phone type issue, here's your primary contact. So again, I can put myself, and maybe here's some information of things you can try while you're waiting for us to get back with you on this issue. So for this example, we say plug the device into a wall charger and wait an hour and then call us, whatever the instructions or supporting information might be. And when you're done, you'll click save and that'll save this particular issue template and we can have multiple ones per category. And from this management side, we'll be able to see here are categories and we can even see how many different tasks are not started in progress or done for the different types of issue templates. Now we can come back to this later, but I want to show how this feeds into the end user kind of first line worker application side of this. So we know as an administrator how we can come in here and manage what shows. But now the other part of this template is this issue reporting tab. So again, as an end user, we'll have to initially authenticate into these connectors when we first load the app. So we'll click allow. And this is what our end users will see that are reporting an issue. This is optimized for the mobile phone. And you see it still pulls up here fine on the desktop, but it actually is really optimized for the phone device. The end user is going to see the issues that they have reported by status and a summary of the last seven days of activity. If they click view issues, that will take them to this summary screen where they can see all of the issues they reported. And of course they can select report an issue and this will take them to the screen to report a new issue. So first thing that they need to do is select an issue type. This corresponds to those issue templates that we just configured. So you remember those categories we looked at for mobile phone and printer and car? Those are these filters we see at the top. So if they're having an issue with their mobile phone, like we just looked at, we can select that and we see those different issue templates. So I can select that phone is unresponsive option from this list. Then it will show the assign information. So I defaulted that if it's this particular issue type, it should automatically assign that to myself and David. So that's showing here in the assign option. We're also asking them their location and we have this toggle for GPS, which is pretty cool. So if we toggle that on, it will get their coordinates from their browser or their mobile device. So they don't have to put in the location. So then we have a description field. Now this is where they would go in and enter in any additional information. And then those are those additional questions that we configured for this issue type. And you see it's just giving them a text box to enter in that information into. So they would go in and fill all this out, click submit, and then it takes them to this nice summary screen, letting them know that it's been reported and it's using that task due date option that we configured in the management application to let them know that this should be resolved by, in this case, October 8th, which is two days from the current date. And then below is that other information we configure for this issue type where it shows for additional help, they can contact me and there's the additional help information. So now they can go to return to home and this should update their issues reported summary where they can see that we have one issue not started. And if I go to view issues, we'll see the issue that they reported, who it's assigned to, and I can view that in task and see any updates that might've been made. So as you see, pretty straightforward app template, easy to set up and start using, and it's really customizable. So this could be used from anything from IT related issues to maintenance issues, whatever you might need it for. It's just a matter of going into that manage issues application that's provided and configuring those categories and issue templates to customize it however you might need to use it. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.